everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet Brady the Bear, which you can see here in the photo. There's several other photos on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. But this is Brady the Bear and he's quite large so I can't fit him the whole uh, Brady here in my camera. But Brady is what... Uh, my kids have come to call him a crochet huggable because it is huggable and snuggable. He is quite large, he's quite plush, uh, and uh, he measures approximately 16 by 13 inches uh, when he's laid flat, but then you can see he's quite plush on the inside. So he's very huggable and very snuggable, making him a, a crochet huggable. This is the first crochet huggable I'm, uh, I've posted here on my channel, but don't worry, there are more coming if you would like to make a little collection of them. They're quite fun and quite work, quick to work up. Today for the tutorial, I will be using a jumbo size yarn. I'm using the Sweet Snuggles yarn by loops and thread which can be found at michael's there's lots of other substitutes for this yarn i know yarn inspirations makes a couple and lion brand as well but you're just looking for this super soft jumbo sized yarn you're going to need three colors for brady the bear i have used two ball a uh, one ball sorry of the color denim which is this blue color one ball of the color white today in the video though I will be using this winter white color so you'll need one ball of that and then you'll need a small amount of a color C I've used the black just for embroidering his uh, eyes nose and mouth each of these balls of yarn has 109 yards in it you'll use most of your color A uh, not quite all of the color B and then again, just a little tiny bit of your color C. You're also going to need a 10 millimeter or an N15 crochet hook. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, once again, while you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and be sure to follow along because there are more crochet algables coming along. Uh, but for today, let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Now I neglected to mention at the start, but for this pattern today, you're also going to need five stitch markers, as well as a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. You'll want to have your stitch markers ready because we're going to start using them right from the beginning. Uh, a quick note on working with this uh, crochet uh, Sweet Snuggles yarn by Loops and Threads. Uh, it is, it does fray quite easily. So I'll just show you down here at the bottom. You can really pull those off. So what you're going to want to do is always leave extra long tails uh, for your um, crochet angle and make sure that your ends are secured each time that you make a color change. Whether you want to sew them in or not them, it's really up to you, but you'll wanna make sure that they really are secured. So we're going to start, our design is worked in rounds and we're going to start from the bottom up. He's worked, uh, the body is worked as one piece and then we will sew on our uh, ears and nose and such afterwards. So what we're going to do is start by making a slip knot and you're going to work a foundation chain your foundation chain will be 11, so chain 11. If you're looking for yarn to substitute, there are a number of yarns out there. This is a jumbo size yarn and uh, there's a Bernat blanket and there's many other yarn types out there if you want to substitute for a different one. Once you have your chain 11 worked, we're going to start round one by working three uh, single crochet into the first stitch. So single crochet into the first stitch, you're going to begin by marking this first stitch. I'm going to use my opposite color 
uh, from the other four that I have. This will be my first stitch. You will always mark the first stitch of your round. You're then going to work a single crochet into each stitch all the way across to your final stitch. When you come to your final stitch, into that final stitch, you're going to work three single crochet stitches and you're going to mark the first stitch and the third. So there's one, mark that first stitch, two, all into the same one, and it's going to bring you around so that you're working into the opposite side of your foundation chain and three. Going to then mark the third stitch. Next you're going to single crochet working along the opposite side of your chain, single crochet into each stitch all the way across until you come to your first one. When you have one stitch remaining, you're going to work two single crochet stitches into the final stitch and you're going to mark that first stitch. Do not join at the end of your rounds. You're going to leave them and continue working continuous rounds. Now for round two, we're going to work three single crochet stitches into this first stitch and we're going to mark the first stitch with our stitch marker and the second stitch with our final corner stitch marker. So work three in total. There's one and I'm going to mark that first stitch two, mark the second stitch as this is going to be our corner stitch and then three. You're then going to single crochet in each stitch across to the next stitch marker. When you come to your next stitch marker, you're going to work three single crochets into that stitch and once again mark the second stitch of the set of three. So there's three, go back, place your stitch marker on that second stitch. Next, single crochet in the next stitch or in each stitch across to the next stitch marker in your next stitch marker work three single crochets and mark the second stitch. So there's two and three. Go back, place your marker in that second stitch. Once again, single crochet all the way across to your next stitch marker. When you come to your next corner stitch marker, 
work three single crochet into the corner stitch. Replace your stitch marker so that it's marking the second stitch in that set of three. You're then back to your first stitch marker. At the end of that round, you're going to have a total of 30 single crochet stitches. For round three, we're essentially going to repeat round two. So crochet into your first stitch. Remember to mark single crochet, mark that first stitch. When you come to your next corner stitch, into the corner stitch, which is your next stitch marker, work three single crochets and mark the second stitch. You're then going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way across to the next stitch marker. When you come to your next stitch marker, work three single crochets into that stitch and mark the second stitch. Single crochet in each stitch across to the next stitch marker. When you come to the marker, work three single crochets into that stitch. and mark the second stitch. Single crochet into each stitch all the way across to your final corner stitch marker. I'm going to pull out a little bit of yarn here. When you come to your next stitch marker, work three single crochets into that next stitch. And single crochet in the next stitch until you come to your first stitch. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 38 stitches. You are then going to repeat your round two two more times. So for round four and five, repeat your round two. At the end of round four, you'll have a total of 46 stitches. At the end of round five, you'll have a total of 54 stitches. At that time, you can meet me back here. At the end of round five, this is what your bottom is going to look like. You'll have a total of 54 stitches. You're now going to, at this time, you can remove your corner stitch marker. So you want to leave that stitch marker that's marking your first stitch in place, but you can remove your other four corners. Now for the next 10 rounds, so rounds six through to 15, you're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. These are going to be continuous rounds, so there's no joining at the end of each round, there's no turning. You're going to use your stitch marker, mark that first stitch, and move it up as your stitch, uh, as your rows progress, rounds progress. So continue on, you'll always have 54 stitches in each round. You're simply working one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Do this for 10 rounds and at the end of round 15, meet me back here. Once you have worked through to round 15, this is the bottom of my bear 
up through. We're about halfway through the body. At the end of round 15, and uh, just one note as I'm coming around here, this is the front side of my stitch, but you will notice that it's going to be turned to the inside. So the front side of your stitch is going to be the wrong side, and then it's the back side of your stitch that forms the outside. It just gives it a little bit more of a smoother shape as you're working. So once you come around to the end of round 15, you can then join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and fasten off. And again, you're going to want to leave again a fairly long tail with this yarn because it does fray quite easily. So join with a slip stitch, fasten off your color A. Now with your color B, you can join in the same stitch as joining. And you're going to chain one. Now for rounds 16 and 17, for two rounds, you're going to work continuous rounds of single crochet stitches again. So single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, do not join, but continue working uh, in the next stitch. Do not join or turn. Once you come to the end of round 17 and have worked two rounds in your color B of single crochet stitches, you can meet me back here. At the end of round 17, you've worked two rounds of single crochet stitches in your color B. For round 18, we're going to start decreasing, so forming the top of our bear. You're going to do this by working a single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Remember to mark that first stitch. Next, work a single crochet two together over the next two stitches. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all three loops. That's your single crochet two together. You're then going to repeat that single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way at, around until you come to your first stitch. At the end of this round 18 you'll have a total of 48 stitches. At the end of round 18 you have a total of 48 stitches. For round 19, you're simply going to work a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Once again, at the end of round 19, you will still have 48 stitches. For round 20, you're going to work a single crochet into each of the next six stitches. And single crochet two stitches together. You're going to repeat that all the way around, single crochet into each of the next six stitches.
and single crochet two stitches together all the way around until you come to your first stitch at the end of round 20 you're going to have a total of 42 stitches for what round 21 you're simply going to single crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way around once again at the end of round 21 you will continue to have 42 stitches for round 22 you're going to single crochet into each of the next five stitches and single crochet two stitches together you're going to repeat that all the way around single crochet into each of the next five stitches followed by a single crochet two stitches together at the end of this round you will have a total of 36 stitches for round 23 single crochet into that first stitch and into each stitch all the way around at the end of round 23 you will continue to have 36 stitches for round 24 I just broke my stitch marker <laughs> for round 24 you're going to single crochet into each of the next four stitches and then single crochet two stitches together let's go back there single crochet two stitches together you're going to repeat that single crochet into each of the next four stitches and single crochet two stitches together all the way around until you come to your first stitch at the, at the end of this round you'll have a total of 30 stitches for round 25 you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and single crochet into each stitch all the way around at the end of this round you will continue to have your 30 single crochet stitches Now when you come to the end of your round 25, this is your bear's body here, you're going to set the body aside for a few moments. You don't want that loop to pull through, so if it helps, I would lock it with a stitch marker and maybe pull it up a little bit larger. Set your bear's body aside for a minute and uh, we're going to come back to it in just a sec. So we're gonna set that aside. We're now going to work the eye patch. So you can see on my Brady right here, I have an eye patch on his left hand side. So we're going to work that together. And we're going to work the other accessories too and join them to the bear before we continue working any more on his body. So for the eye, I took my color A and you're going to chain two. Alternatively, you may work a magic ring at this point. It's up to you, whatever you find easiest, but chain two. You are then going to work six single crochet stitches into that second chain from your hook. So six all into the second chain. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Do not join your stitch once again. 
Uh, if you would like, you can use a stitch marker, but there is only one more round for the eye patch, so you may just be able to count it as well. But you're going to work two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around, so you'll have a total of 12 stitches. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve. Once you have the twelve stitches, you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and fasten off. When you fasten off on this piece, you're going to want to leave a very long tail because we're going to use this tail to sew the patch on. So leave a very long tail. You can then go ahead and weave in your first strand, the first end. Make sure that it's nice and secure. Again, these tails do like to fray a little bit. There we go. Once you have your eye patch worked, you're then going to thread that long end through a yarn needle. Pick up your bare body once again. And you're going to want to find what side you'd like for the front of your bear. And you're going to place the eye patch on just somewhere near the top of the bear's head. You're then going to take your yarn needle, and now this is why we left a fairly large opening. And I'm putting my eye right up on the right hand side, right below the top loops of my final round. You're then going to simply sew the eye patch into place. So all the way around. Once you have the eye patch sewn on, you can then go ahead and you're just simply going to take a little bit of your black yarn and embroider on the face that you would like. If it helps, you can use a stitch marker to mark maybe the placement of the nose. It's up to you. I'll show you my little original birdie bear face here. I'll pull back. This is my original guy. I just did a little mouth, a little heart-shaped nose, and some very happy closed eyes. Uh, it's up to you. You're just going to sew them on using a little bit of your black yarn. Uh, it's uh, really up to you. So you can be creative here with the face. I'm going to leave you to work yours and uh, then we'll continue on with the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just working one of the eyes here just so you can see how I sew them on. I'm just working little stitches with my black yarn going in and out. If it helps, you may want to go over them a couple of times to make them a little bit thicker and stand out a little bit more against this uh, super plush yarn. It's up to you. So if there's my first die, you're going to want to kind of match it with the next. If I line it up over here, I'm just going to bring my yarn. The nice thing about this is all that is going to be hidden on the inside. So instead, of, for me, instead of risking having the yarn fray, I just leave it attached and come all the way across. I lost my one corner. I'm going to go back and double it up. Don't pull it too tight. Uh, they will kind of get lost, but again, you don't want to leave it too loose either. And there's my two eyes. Down here, I've marked out the nose, so I'm just going to bring my yarn down remove this stitch marker so it's not in the way. And there's my little nose and then I'll attach some more yarn and go work a little mouth unless I might have enough here to do it I might here just gonna go down a little bit and work a little bit of a smirk on his face Once you have his face worked, you can fasten off and weave in all those ends. Once you have the face completed, you can set it aside again and you're going to work the tail. So if I go back to my original, you can see on his backside here, I just have a little bit of a tail worked. So what we're going to do for our tail, it's worked similar to our eye patch. And you're going to start by making a slip knot and chaining two into that second chain from your hook. You're going to work six single crochet stitches. For round two, you're going to work two single crochets 
in each stitch all the way around. Feel free to mark your first stitch if you would like. At the end of round two, you'll have a total of 12 stitches. For the tail, you're going to work one more round than you did for the eye patch. For round three, into that first stitch, work one single crochet and two single crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one single crochet into your next, two single crochets into your next stitch. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. At the end of your round three, you can join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. And once again, you're going to fasten off, leaving an extra long tail. You can then go ahead and weave in your extra end. I pushed my tail through to the right side uh, simply because this back side is the one that's going to be showing when I join my tail to the bear's body. You're then ready to sew the bear's tail onto the back of your bear. Now when I sewed on my tail, this is the back of my bear, I'm going to find a good spot to position it, preferably in the center there. And then I just took a little bit of fiber fill just to make it a little bit more plush and stuck it under the tail before sewing the tail into place. So go ahead, sew your tail into place. Once you have your tail sewn on to the back of your bear, you're then ready to work the ears of your bear. So for our ears, we're going to make two of them. I started by working the front, and for the front of the ear, as they are made up of two colors, you're going to take a little bit of your color B. The ears are worked in rows. Make a slip knot. And for the front of the ear, you're going to chain five. Next, for row one, work one single crochet into the second chain from your hook, and then in each stitch all the way across. You'll have a total of four single crochet stitches. Chain one and turn, going to single crochet into this first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across.
For the final row of the front of your ear, chain one, work a single crochet two stitches together over the first two stitches, and single crochet two stitches together over the next two stitches. At this time you can then fasten off, weave in your ends, and repeat for the second ear. Once you have the two front of your bear ears worked, you can set those aside. You're then going to work on the back of the bear's ear. You can start by making a slip knot. Again, you'll do this twice. And then by chaining six. You're then going to single crochet into the second chain from your hook and into each stitch all the way across at the end of this row you'll have a total of five stitches. Chain one, turn your work. For rows two and three you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. Chain one, turn your work, and single crochet in each stitch all the way across. For the final round, chain one, or row, chain one, single crochet, two together over the first two stitches, single crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet two more stitches together. You're then going to fasten off, actually before you fasten off, it's up to you, <laughs> you can fasten off or you can take your, the front of your bare ear and at this time you're going to single crochet into each uh, stitch along the side, along the top, and then along the opposite side. So I'm going to actually fasten off here. Then with the front side of the ear facing, I'm just going to join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. I'm going to work over top of these tails and single crochet. So I'm going to work three single crochet stitches up the side of my bear's ear. Three single crochet stitches across the top. It's going to, because the front one is smaller than the back one, it's going to cause the back one to curve a little bit, which is going to give the shape to our bear's ear. So three single crochets across the back, then working along the side, three more single crochet stitches. You'll want these stitches to be fairly tight. If you get, come to the bottom of the ear and you find you still have a little bit of space left, you can add one more in. You just want to have that nice curved shape. That's our bare ear. You can then, once you come across, fasten off this time leaving a fairly long end so that you can use it to tie or to sew the bear's ear in place. Go ahead and weave in any ends. I'm going to go ahead and work my second ear and then meet you back here. To sew your Brady Bear's ears on, you're simply going to position them on the side of your bear's head depending on where you want them. If you want to work a couple more of the next round so they're more up top, you can. It's up to you. I'm going to uh, work mine right here. So once again, just below that top loop
on the top of your bear's head. I have them laying flat so that I know where the side is. And I'm simply just going to, under that top loop, sew his ears into place. You're going to do this for both ears, making sure that they are positioned relatively evenly on your bear. So one's not higher than the other, but go ahead and just sew those ears on. Once you have your bear's ears sewn into place, you're ready to continue with the top of your bear's head. So you can then once again place that color B on your hook. And you're going to pick up on round 26. For round 26 of the top of your bear's head, you're going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And single crochet two stitches together. You're going to repeat that all the way around, single crochet into each of the next three stitches and single crochet two stitches together. All the way around until you come to your first stitch. When you come to your first stitch, you'll have a total of 24 stitches. For round 27, uh, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. At the end of round 27, you'll have a total of 24 stitches. For round 28, you're going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches and single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around, single crochet into each of the next two stitches and single crochet two stitches together until you come to your first stitch. At the end of this stitch, you'll uh, this round, you'll have a total of 18 stitches. At the end of round 28, you can remove your hook just briefly and you're then going to stuff your bear with fiber fill. Again, depending on how big or how flush you would like your bear, it may affect how much fiber fill you put in. Uh, I purchased 20 ounce bags and I was getting about two bears per bag, so about 10 ounces of fiber fill per bear. And you're just going to stuff the fiber fill in until it's as plush as you would like. bit more in the top and we should be good to go. There we are. I'll pull back even a little bit more. There we are. Once you have the bear stuffed with fiber fill, you're then on the home stretch for round 29. You're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. You're going to repeat that all the way around single crochet into the next stitch followed by two single crochets 
uh, single crochet two together until you come to your first stitch at the end of this round you'll have a total of 12 stitches A little awkward working them here as I'm trying to squish them under my camera. There we go, our final stitch. At the end of round 29, you have a total of 12 stitches. You can then remove that stitch marker briefly once again. And for round 30, you're going to simply single crochet two stitches together all the way around, and you'll have a total of six stitches at the end of this round. You'll want these top stitches to be fairly tight. At the end of that round, round 30, you can join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long tail. You're then going to take that tail, thread it onto your yarn needle. And then sew the top of your bear closed. To sew the top of my bear closed, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to see here on the video, but I just wove my hook in, or my needle in and out through the tops of the stitches in that final round. Just weave them in and out through the top stitches. When you come back, to your first stitch, simply pull it closed and I'll bring the head to a nice finish. You're then going to want to really make sure that you secure this end. Thankfully this yarn hides a lot. Weave in that tail. And then to ensure that it really wasn't going to fray too much, I actually inserted it all the way into the center of my bag, my bear, pulled it a little bit tight, clipped it off, and then pulled it back through to the inside. Then the top of your bear is nice and closed. You can give them a little bit of shaping there if you would like. But that is your Brady bear. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, learning how to crochet this Brady Bear crocheteable, and uh, I look forward to bringing you more of these little guys or big guys soon. And I do hope that you'll subscribe and follow along. If you happen to make one of these, be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet, and uh, I'll be sure to come by and admire it. I can't wait to see all of your crochet bears. Until then, until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.